a relatively large percentage of Uganda's rural households derive their livelihoods from indigenous cattle. Well known as a source of food and sociocultural wealth, these phenotypes have been kept in families as security in many sociocultural aspects. Their longevity attributed to survival in harsh ecological zones with traditional management practices, these animals have kept the natives satisfied but not enough to compete on the global market. With deliberate efforts to raise productivity and turn the native cattle keeping into a business, many Ugandans are rethinking their methods of keeping cattle. From feeding to breeding, here is all you need to know about growing from cattle keeping to dairy farming. Coming up on Seeds of Gold. These Frisian cows, you see, we don't feed them on anything, they are the artificial things. We feed, they only feed on grass. So all we do is maintain the paddocks, that is paya, pa anam, and at the end of the day, these animals are feeding naturally. We do not put in a lot as regard feeding, and at the end of the day, the profit margin is a bit higher, and we make money. This is Kamate Dairy Farm. Best in Kiruhura, started in the early 90s, this farm has kept cattle from three generations now. What was engraved as a traditional norm to always have milk in the home, today is the cash cow of tomorrow. farm <laughs> Katanakakurisente, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Well, at Kamate, we sell milk. And uh, we also do in-calf heifers, we sell non-in-calf heifers, and we also sell breeding bulls at Kamate Dairy Farm. Good management practices like handling, feeding, breeding, disease control are some of the effective measures to quality dairy production. With these at hand, this is the current farm's performance today. <laughs> While we are identifying the breeds, we identify the high quality breeds which are able to give us the quantity of milk. Unfortunately, we do not have a high price for the quality. That, say, that is to say the high butter fat content in the milk. So we aim for quality, sorry quantity. That is milk from the Holstein Frisian. We, we aim at getting high quality superior sires and dams which we cross to get uh, good hybrid heifers and eventually I think, uh, I think we have a very good breed because we are having first time calvers doing first lactation at 20 liters per day and the farm is growing. Currently we have had so many dried out animals but maximumly we have gone 1000 liters per day 
and right now we are there we are around 850 700 well our milk actually does the marketing for itself because it's really quality milk given that our cows were previously crossed from the from the local cows they still maintain the high quality butter fat in their milk uh, the cleanliness like we saw the, the milk as always make sure they wash their hands we make sure the cans are very clean the bucket the milking buckets are so clean uh, quality of the milk is okay and it really gets the market price for itself we, we identify good breeding bulls with a very good milking record very good confirmation so that we are able to satisfy our customers at the end of the day the flexibility of a grazing enterprise is what makes it appealing to many different managerial approaches from the part-time farmer who has a few head of stock calves during the growing season to keep the grass short to the full-time producer who has a large cow-calf herd maintained year in and year out. Grazing is often the preferred way to harvest forage. For Kamate's situation, the implementation of a free-range rotational graze helps producers meet their operations objectives while maintaining an optimum stocking density. <laughs> Up next, learn how Kamate runs the day-to-day -day running of the farm and later managing the foot and mouth disease currently ravaging the area. disadvantages of the zero grazing system are much labor is required to take feed and water to the animals much capital is required for construction of a zero grazing unit the possibility that animals are stressed because of too much confinement inside the zero grazing unit these are the advantages of free-range grazing on a day-to-day -day basis uh, first of all when I wake up in the morning I supervise my animals uh, 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 because it's the right time you can see the, the, the sick animal and the, and the, and the health one. Uh, the hardest part is the twin ngoha. Ngoha niye kuchira kutega nsu muntezi. Kunguru kui mkantomu kashishu chintu chingu vanza kora. Shai kume na ividi. Nimbanza supervising it. To check out the sick animals, the expecting ones, the, the ezkwe enda kwema. Um, I make sure that the cans are set, the, the buckets are there for milking cows. Uh, feeding, these Frisian cows you see, we don't feed them on anything, the, the artificial things. We feed, they only feed on grass. Paddocks. Uh, breeding, we, we get the best bulls. We, we look for bulls. Frisian cows. 
about the paddocks, uh, we have the paddocks that are, can accommodate about 50 cows. During the lactation, after five days, to start on paddock and So, a jay and dish paddock of a new cura, of Nyasin of Banu Kura. So, after the five days, we switch to another paddock. That's how we have been managing 50 cows each paddock. Uh, the dairy or the milkers are gazetted for paddocks of their own. The non in calf heifers also have paddocks on their own. Then the in calves and the dryers, the first time calvers and the dryers also stay together. So like that we are able, to, we are able to, to, to manage and supervise and know that such and such an animal, animal cow ID this and this was not able to be mounted, was not, still open for pregnancy. And we do not have unwanted interrupt, interruptions by bulls or... By the way, we employ over 40 people on this farm. Uh, workers that look after the heifers, the in calves, the non in calves, the, the people that clear the farm. Um, we as well have goats here on this farm, over 600 goats, the, the boas and the, the movende goats. Uh, so all these people, we employ them to, to work on the farm. On this farm, our grass grows naturally. And when it grows, it, gro it has to grow with shrubs, what, the weed. So we bring in people every year to come and clear the farm. They, to remove those shrubs, the, 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 the unnecessary things in the farm that we don't want. We show them, they clear them every year. Challenges help focus business into profitable ventures as long as we best learn from them. Today, Kiduhura has been identified as one of the areas affected by foot and mouth disease that affects cow milk production. We take a look on how to manage the disease to avoid losses. When your animal is affected by this disease, you don't see that the animal has the disease in the first two to three days. The animal begins to show a number of signs and one of them is they, 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 develop, to, they develop wounds in the mouth and they stop eating. And the, as they walk towards the grass, these animals have thick drooling saliva that comes out of their mouths. That is one of the signs that these animals show after a number of days. There are things that when these animals have gone for around four or five days, the virus affects also their hooves. And these animals exhibit a lot of lameness. And they have difficulties to walk to their eating places. And when the animal has these clinical symptoms, it doesn't mean that the animal has got the disease that same day. It could have stayed with disease for over five days or sometimes for a full week. So, as a farmer, you need to take keen interest whenever you go to your herd. This FMD is caused by five types of viruses in Uganda. We have got a virus that belongs to a type called serotype O. And then other animals have serotype A. Another one is called serotype, uh, serotype C. But that one is not very common in East Africa at the moment. We have three more types which belong to the South Africa territory, which is always called SAT1, SAT2, and SAT3. Those six viruses have been observed in Uganda. So whenever you have outbreaks of FMD, it is most likely one of these viruses is the one which is showing up. Many times, farmers have vaccinated their animals against two or three strains. Now, it is very common that the strain that you do not protect your animals against is the one which is showing up in next outbreak. So, as one of the country experts, I would like to encourage farmers, as soon as you identify a sick animal in your herd, try as much as possible to separate it from the healthy animals and isolate that herd such that that virus which is within contact of those animals in the infected unit does not spread the neighboring herds. By now, you are probably asking, how do they make money on this farm? Mm. 
ni zara zari ni zari nyan ati ni tunda nyana makumi ya tano oh mwaka mshoto ni kumi mwaka ni tunde ni mi zirukuk kuna hatengo hivi ni nini Entendo sore za mwen bazi mingi nicyo kitukutsara bitkanda hatari yacyo engoha yabe taro entezo ni basaku ni basaku kwereza buri kimucyono ni zarenyana nyeno zuguza abarisa barunje abakubano bazenda bazitwara enimi bazitwara abarisa barunje zitari nunje zo takunda ozo naho zuguza abenyama entendo stura amateni goga kokora ibintu ebi byona nicyo yuntasi yanjye ni Ini kuntah itu.